MacArthur was breaking, brought back in by Tutu. Tutu scores! His pass to the National Hockey League was harder to predict than most. Too small in stature, too rough around the edges. But Jordan Tutu beat the odds. A tough childhood, a devastating personal loss, and his own demons. Becoming the only pro from Nunavut, and now a published author. He spoke with Peter Mansbridge about All the Way and the poignant story behind its title. You talk in your, in your book about hockey in some ways being an escape for you growing up, that getting out to that lake or getting to the arena, that got you away from the problems you saw of Northern life? Absolutely. You know, once 3.30 rolled around when school was done, you know, it was, it was off to the house, pick up, pick up our skates and uh, mosey on our way over to the lake and, and you know, be there until it got dark out, you know, right till the last minute. But this was an outlet for for myself and understanding now that it was also an outlet for a lot of the my, my friends, you know. Not a lot is talked about in, in these small communities within family problems. Part of the escape wasn't just escaping school, it was escaping those kind of issues, the social issues that exist in small communities in the North. Absolutely. I mean, when you're, when you grow up in an environment that's not healthy, uh, you know, communication isn't, isn't the greatest. Uh, and as a kid, you're fearful of, you know, getting your parents mad. And, and when they're under the influence of, you know, either drugs or alcohol, you know, that intensifies their, their mood. And as kids, you want to stay away from that, and you know it was a uh, it was an outlet that uh, you know every kid almost used. Did you talk about it as kids? Absolutely not. You didn't talk about it. No, you know it was, I guess, frowned upon. Uh, you know, like I said, everybody knows everybody. Um, so what happened behind closed doors stayed behind closed doors. You talked a moment ago about your brother, Terrence, who obviously has been a huge figure in your life. Your book is titled All the Way, which is words from his suicide note. Tell me about that day. Well, first of all, Terrence was a very influential man growing up as a kid for me. Uh, you know, he was three years older than me. I was uh, the younger brother who wanted to hang out with him and all his brothers, so I did whatever it took to, to be with them. And, you know, that, that day, that morning when I found the letter in my, in my bedroom and Brandon, you know, I grabbed that piece of paper and I, I read it a couple of times, didn't, didn't even think about it. You know, I crunched it up, I threw it in the garbage, and, and that was that, you know, because the, the end result, I never ever could imagine him taking his own life. He was actually on his way down to um, Norfolk uh, to try out for the American Hockey League. And so he was training with me and Brandon. Uh, and, you know, we were doing our thing. He'd been picked up for driving uh, under the influence. and uh, and. Clearly, that must have led, in some fashion, to what eventually happened. Do you know why he took his life? You know, with suicide, you'll you'll never know the answer. Uh, you know, Terrence was a guy who was a happy-go-lucky guy, never showed any emotion, uh, never talked about problems, and you know, I think that's where we need to understand that it's okay to talk, uh, it's okay to open up, and, and not be afraid. The note was, Jor, go all the way, right? Absolutely. Talking about hockey. So how did you react to that when you realized the full scope of it? Did, did that give you kind of additional drive or did it make you mad or like? Well, I was, I was only 19 years old and, you know, uh, I remember we were in, in training camp with the Wee Kings and I was sitting up in the, kind of the VIP lounge and, and looking down at 
the guys on the ice and my dad was sitting there with me and I looked over at him and I said, you know, Tara wants me to keep doing what I'm doing. I just feel that in my heart. And, uh, you know, because he was a guy that, his drive, his determination to get to where he wanted to be and that was playing pro hockey. You know, I was gonna have to live up to those expectations. And, you know, I went to training camp in, in Nashville a week later and things just all fell into place. And, you know, every day I think of, of that note. Tonight, the Roanoke Express will officially retire the number 22 worn by Terrence. Tell me about what this has meant to you and your relationship with the uh, kids in the North. We talked about this a moment ago, and one of the big challenges in, in the North is the suicide question, which at times feels, and you kind of hint at it in the book, that it, it, it's almost like a career option for some kids in the Arctic. You know, like the suicide, uh, which for a lot of, of us in southern Canada, we, we can't quite grasp, but they're looking for kind of leadership, they're looking for mentorship, they're looking for role models to talk to them about that issue. And I raise it because I, I can remember being in a Callaway a couple years ago, I got off the plane and the principal of the school met me because the night before, unbeknownst to me, there'd been a suicide of a, you know, a, a young teenager. And they wanted me to go and speak to the school, to the kids, well, you know, I, I did, but I, I can't identify with what they're going through. Mm -hmm. You can. So what do, you, what do you tell them when that topic is raised? When you go home to rank and you're talking with kids, what, what do you say? Well, first of all, you know, Nunavut is my home. This is where I grew up. This is always going to be a place in my heart. It's an honor to be a, a role model for, you know, our, our people up in Nunavut and, and across North America for, for the Aboriginal community. You know, growing up in Nunavut, it, it's very isolated. Uh, I mean, you talk about winter times being minus 50 and dark 20 hours a day. Uh, so, you know, depression sets into place. And, you know, I, I think that the biggest thing I talk about is the, about loving yourself, being comfortable in your own skin, being proud of where you come from. Uh, you know, it's, it's not easy living in the Arctic, you know. When I talk to the young kids, uh, you know, I always make sure I, I talk about being open and honest and not being afraid to, to talk, you know, because I, I can relate. Growing can up, you, can you relate? I know you can relate in the growing up, but they must look at you and say, "Wow, you know, in a couple of days he's getting back on that jet and he's heading back to New York or Nashville or Detroit or wherever he may be going." Does he really get it? Does he really understand what we're going through? Absolutely, I do. You know, I, I talk to a lot of people up north on a daily basis, and, and you know. I understand that it's it's a situation that they put themselves in. They're they're so used to growing up in a community where they know everybody, and they come down south and you know they, they don't know anything. You know that that's an opportunity to make yourself a better person by realizing that you know the sky's the limit. No one's going to do it for you. No one no one you know told me how to get to where I am today other than the fact of me mentally grinding it out on a daily basis for 10, 12 years of my, my hockey career. That's just a taste of Peter's conversation with Jordan Tutu, his guest on this week's One on One. You have several options to see the entire interview this weekend on CBC News Network beginning Saturday and on CBC Television Sunday at 12.30 p.m., 1 p.m. in Newfoundland.